Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Pradeep. I'm a sophomore in the Quincy House, probably studying math. And uh, yeah, I was in India with SAI this summer, looking at the implications of mobile phones in the healthcare industry, in the healthcare system. And I particularly look at diabetes with this organization called Janacare, where I was with a friend of, uh, from Harvard, Diane, who could not join us today. And so I'll present you a brief overview of how technology has been used in diabetes control, how they've been developing solutions for, for measure, taking blood tests and helping patients like fin change their lifestyle, particularly like for, for diabetes. And, and yeah, anyone like who's been to India, who studies India, cannot fail to notice two things in the healthcare industry. First, uh, the economic growth is promoting a more sedentary lifestyle, which means that people are uh, more susceptible to chronic diseases. And second, the existing inf healthcare infrastructure hasn't been able to expand in the same rate, which means that people are creating more susceptible diseases and the healthcare system cannot bear that, that load. And, and we think mobile health could be a solution for this. Because while uh, the traditional healthcare system cannot, haven't been able, hasn't been able to develop, mobile phones, on the other hand, like, has been able to make rapid progress in, the, uh, in, in accessibility and growth. Uh, and, and the second thing is mobile phones, they can offer very close care. Like we've seen doctors tell how like, patients can forget their reports, but they never forget to bring mobile phones. So the proximity of a mobile device, say a tablet or a smartphone, to a patient could be leveraged to keep track of their daily behavior, could be leveraged to take track of their daily medicine intake, which a doctor could, might find useful in his or her treatment. And third, like you can do a lot of things with the mobile phone. You, it's very versatile. You can take pictures of, of, of a lesion, or you can take measurement of temperature. And what Janaka has been able to do, like is develop this device capable of multiple blood tests, which is just phenomenal. And the versatility of a mobile phone or a tablet can be leveraged, could be leveraged uh, in healthcare concerns. So yeah, like you, we can use mobile phones for awareness, like sending alerts for epidemics or sending daily health tips for, for chronic patients. We can use it for diagnosis. We have seen cases where mobile cameras have been used to diagnose oral cancer, which is phen phenomenal. And it could be used for treatment, which uh, Janaker is working on right now. And, and, the, and the last, like mobile phones can be used to aggregate data for uh, a medical research, which could be like, facilitated by a big data technology we have right now. And uh, while there are like, so many benefits of mobile health, there are several in inhibitors too as well. First, the healthcare industry, as we see, as we saw there, was pretty inertial. Not everyone we met were enthusiastic about technology. Doctors feared that, well, if mobile phones would do their job, then they would be out of a job. And uh, like doctors felt they would be losing control once, they, once mobile phones take over the responsibility. And, and second, the expectations of doctors vary from patients. For instance, like patients expect to reduce their health cost by using mobile health. But doctors think that someone should monetize the time they spent online. And uh, patients want the mobile phones to tell like wh what, what they should do, what they should not do, but doctors don't want to give that control to, a, to an inanimate object. And yeah, so patients want more access to doctors, pro healthcare providers. Doctors feel that, well, I, sh I should spend less time with patients because mobile phones should, should do their job. And yeah, because of these inhibitors, uh, there hasn't been a significant progress, especially uh, in context of uh, chronic diseases. And uh, Janacare is where I interned for about six weeks. I was with Diane. She looked at user adoption while like, I kind of studied the business model which they're using right now. And uh, so Janacare works on diabetes control. And like one of the major challenges of any diabetes control solution is the patient adherence. Because a problem like diabetes calls for very drastic changes in lifestyle, patients just don't follow it to the, to the end. Like you're asking patients to take regular insulin doses, take regular blood, blood tests, to visit doctors every, every other month or so. And like over a long term, it just becomes very uneconomical and like patients just drop out because they don't see a tangible improvement. So yeah. Uh, 
And the economic burden uh, is one primary reason why patients don't adhere. The test are just too expensive and one of the major costs goes to hospital hospitalization. Uh, and this is not just a one-time investment, like you do it for every, every single day, every single month. And that makes it like, very discouraging for patients to follow. And uh, especially with, with countries like India, there are some social cultural practices which, which rather uh, affect like particular dietary habits. For instance, wh wherever you go, people offer tea and it's kind of rude to like reject it, re rude to like not take it. And uh, so these practices around weddings, around these religious ceremonies where there is high consumption of oily rich substances, high consumption of sugar rich substances, uh, it affects diabetes. And the existing relationship between doctor patient is very inefficient. For instance, a doctor, from, from what we saw, a doctor gets to spend about 10 or 15 minutes with the patient. And that time is very little for, to understand what the patient has been doing for the last three months, to provide prescriptions, uh, to follow up with, with, with the medication. Yeah, this is a complaint we receive all the time. And Jonacare has built this, built this small mobile extension which is capable of these five amazing tests. They can measure glucose, they can measure HbA1c, they can take lipid tests, they can take hemoglobin tests, and even the creatinine tests, and they have other, other four tests in the pipeline. So this little device they've developed is capable of like, being a portable laboratory. It will reduce cost of visiting hospitals every time. It will reduce the time it takes to get a diagnosis. And, and I, like, we see a lot of potential now with, with this particular device they've built. And along with the device, they built this entire ecosystem. Like they, they developed this app application called Habits, where uh, there are videos based on reality shows where like patients can learn about diabetes, what what they should do, what they should not do. And it turns out the uh, delivering information through TV shows and videos will, is mo much more effective than sending texts or emails or or other text based based messages. And, and they also have this tracking component where patients can like, see how much they ate, how much they walked, how, what's their weight, what's their how, yeah, gl glucose level. They can take these readings which doctors have access to in, in the back end. And doctors can see how the pro patient has been progressing over time. And nurses can see that. And they can provide feedback accordingly. And, and the third component too is, is this coaching system they've developed. Like Janacare has an array of coaches who are sitting between doctors and patients like provide like quick feedback to patients on, on behavior. For instance, you missed your blood reading for a week and your coach will give you a call like, why, why, why are you doing this? So uh, the AINA the device, the tracking component, the education component, and the coaching component to get the course ecosystem, like combining doctors, uh, nurses, coaches, and patients to, to, to make a really effective healthcare solution. And in our, in our like, study, we identified this uh, entity Called, called the gatekeepers. Uh, and these gatekeepers are the ones who control the flow of product from, from Janacare, the supplier, to patients, the consumer. Like these gatekeepers are usually uh, entities like insurance companies which, uh, who control the flow of products, or doctors. Doctors can literally prescribe a product to a patient and, and they can either like break the market share of, of any, any product. So it's usually hospitals, doctors, insurance companies who act as gatekeepers. They, they channel the flow uh, of products. And, and like we think that instead of having Genacare cater into individual patients, it makes sense for them to cater to these bigger corporations like hospitals to get easy access to patients. Like for instance, if, if Genacare centers itself around patients, like it has, it has there is a very low retention among patients. If there is no one in the background supervising a patient, then the, they have very low adherence because they have no incentive to continue with the, with the medication. And given the saturation of market, which is already there, given the number of glucometers available out there, it's difficult to find uh, a substantial market share. On the other hand, if Janacare would cater to, to the gatekeepers or the doctors, than, uh, which, which includes providing solutions specifically for doctors like, uh, mon like monitoring tools, tracking tools, and feedback tools, then uh, 
then the fear of doctor's supervision behind a patient would, would enable uh, Genicare to make sure that patients continue over a longer period of time. And, and second, given, given that the fact that hospitals and doctors already have a bunch of patients with them, it, like, it's easier to reach, reach out to consumers. And there is another entity we, we discovered. Uh, this is another form of great gatekeeper, which manages the entry of patients. And they include uh, corporate institutions. For instance, we discovered that uh, multinational companies like Reuters, like IBM, they have these regular health camps as part of their corporate res responsibility. And a lot of like, these medical products have exhibitions there. And this is where like, they get this massive number of customers at once. And uh, yeah, we met this woman who, who was in Reuters. And like, Reuters had this program called Global Corporate Challenge, where, like, where they would reward the person who would walk the most over, over a period of month. And pharmaceuticals are another gatekeepers, because pharmaceuticals have these regular health camps for doctors and patients, where they introduce these new, new ideas. And if Genicare can cater to these particular entities, then uh, it has easier time uh, finding, finding a niche market. And again, there are insurance companies. If insurance companies would, would waiver the cost of uh, habits or, or the INA device, then uh, patients would find it favorable to use it. So, okay, so uh, this is a final slide from my side. And as a takeaways, I discovered, like, we, we, we think these three uh, ideas could be, could be major takeaways. For instance, the INA device uh, is capable of so many tests. But, but, but the glucose test is the one like, most used. Perhaps we can find its use in other diseases as well. Perhaps it cannot be limited to diabetes, but it can extend to other, other chronic diseases as well. That would be really good. And, uh, and one thing Genica should be careful about is that it should not intend to replace the traditional medicine system. Uh, it has to build on it. It, it is not an alternative, but, but a facilitator. And third, uh, instead of catering to patients directly, they should cater to these big, bigger entities like hospitals, doctors, and uh, pharmaceuticals uh, to reach out to more patients uh, because there are like, problems with the retention in, in the patient-centered model. So these were my primary takeaways. If, if Diane was here today, she would, give a, she would have given an overview of user adoption, how patients who, uh, for instance, do not know how, like, do not understand the mobile language, do not understand English, deal with this technology. And it's interesting because there's just so many things uh, we take granted in the Western world which just don't exist in, in, in these countries. For instance, we, 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 whenever we develop a solution here, we would imagine like a widespread accessibility of 3G network. Like, and, and, and over there, it's difficult to find a, like a functional internet -like network. So, uh, so yeah, that was from my side, if any questions. I have a question for all three of you, and I was wondering if there were overlaps that you saw in terms of use of technology for education versus use of technology for health. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, one like primary overlap that that binds, I think, their right, their next step with Jana Care, is this idea of creating a whole ecosystem by including teachers, parents, and students in, in, in it. And while Genicare aims to connect patients, doctors, nurses, and other providers, healthcare providers, uh, I think this idea of social network, this idea of creating an ecosystem combining all these responsible elements, is uh, is similar to b b both of our projects. Definitely. Um, one piece of inspiration I, I I think I would take from the Genicare, uh, specifically the Habits app, is the idea of perhaps in like X step building in a core curriculum that must be completed before other things. Um, that is perhaps like you, you have to learn this stuff about health and hygiene before you can like move on. Um, so just thinking that's interesting because personally I just didn't have that much faith in like using a gamified way to teach uh, important things like specifically related to health. Um, but after just working with like working with Brittany uh, over the summer, um, I, I just gained more belief in it and more confidence. So I think that'd be a really interesting idea. More. Uh, Overarching uh, question for you, Pradeep. Um, just can you comment on your overall um, experience this summer in terms of what did you actually learn, right? So we set out to, to explore the impact of mobile technology 
mm -hmm. these various mm -hmm. sectors. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you spent a significant part of the health organization, but there were other things that, that you did in other organizations. And just what do you take away from it, having spent a chunk of your life in the right, region right, 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 right. and now seeing what is happening? Okay, so, so I'm from Nepal. And and the way mobile like this industry has been prog like growing in, in, in both countries are pretty much the same. Like our the the system we use, the networks we use, the, the rates, the charges, they're pretty much similar in both countries. What is interesting to me is that uh, in India, like mobile phones have been the center, the frontier of, of social wave, the social wave of progress. And people ha have actually been using, leveraging this technology to deliver, like, to change social constructs by empowering women, by, by empowering patients, by empowering students. Like, while in countries like mine, like, this hasn't, hasn't happened for, for some reason. And, uh, and yeah, like, one, one, one thing that was really interesting to me was, was the legal side to it, the battle of net neutrality, and how, like, privacy concerns differ, differ over geographic regions. That was, that was interesting to me.